Boye, te tu pua, boye, te tafito, boye, te kahuyo ngariki, boye, tavivi ya tu mataueng. Each year, a new intake of army recruits arrive to complete their basic training. They have just 16 weeks to prove they have what it takes. They'll be pushed to the limit as they transition from civilian to soldier. Kill the enemy! And not everyone will make it. It's week 10 and the recruits have just got back from a relaxing four days break. At the Army's Marae or Meeting House, the instructors are preparing a rather different set of exercises. This is part of the exercise Ngāti Tū Mātauenga, which uh, teaches them how the Marae came about, bringing them together that te kotahi tanga, so that they understand the, the cultural aspect of being a part of the New Zealand Army. This will be your marae phase. Half of you is going to be in the kitchen. Now he's doing the hangi. The other half is in the marae, in the whare. Get into it. Now, head to the front of marae. After the freedom of being at home with friends and family, the memories of not having to take orders are still fresh. It was different. You wake up early still, and you think you got all these timings. And if you're not doing anything, it feels weird. Recruit to fighty. It's causing a stir with his new haircut. It's cricket, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. I'd be like wearing uh, some sort of hedges. People would be like, far. Nah, yeah, that guy looks normal. Bang! <laughs> no, he's not. I just went and hung out with my son. Sport him a bit. A bit too much, probably, but my reason I'm joining is because of him. Like, I just had to keep that in the back of my mind and know that it's only six weeks that I have left. So, like, it would just be a waste of those ten weeks that we didn't get to spend together. So I always knew that I was going to come back. I did have doubt, but I was like, nah, I'm going to come back. I spent one whole day in bed just watching movies and stuff with my junk food. I spoiled the family. Oh, I went home with about, like, three grand, and I spent way too... I've got, like, a grand left. And I spent every single cent of my money. This is our gateway or entranceway into the New Zealand Army, as it's the eyelet of a needle, and you got a thread that mm. cotton through it. What colours can we put through that needle? Any colour. Any colour. Looking around this group that we have at the moment, we've got all different backgrounds. Germany, Ireland, Ireland Samoa. So we are now a multicultural society. We are that in the Army as well. The Marae has been designed to give us that one vehicle where we can come together as one unit, one organisation, and move forward. To keep the oneness alive, the recruits will be sleeping under one roof at the Marae. Originally from Germany, recruit von Kwiatkowski became a New Zealand citizen and is excited to be part of Maori culture. I'm really honoured to be here too, like especially as a foreigner. Being accepted in a marae, it's really, that's nah, really cool. And especially now with the, with the hangi, that's my first hangi now. It makes me feel in, like included, like welcome. I'm really looking forward to the haka as well, because I love watching the haka. It just gives me goosebumps all over the time. And um, so once we're going to learn it as well, I'm going to be like, oh, this is the real deal. Yeah. We asked a man by the name of Tekepa Sterling to write a haka for us. And it went along the lines of, I want to hear a nice loud ha, and I want to see the ugliest facials I can see. What that is saying is we signed up to go to war. You didn't know what this was about, and we've actually arrived at the fiery gates of hell. This is reality. This is now what war is. Leading the haka today is 21-year-old recruit Cruz Penne. <laughs> Hey! 
So it's nice and big. Bang, bang, bang. Ladies, there, there, there. Cowboy. Want your heads down? Toro na kai waho. Kai waho. O kinga tope utawa a. O re 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 stop. Next one. Doing that haka means a lot to me. I've known it most of my life. Just to kind of actually leave that haka, that haka itself for the first time for all before is after all the lessons we've been getting about Mati Tu Matawin, it feels mean to be um, to say that you're from here. I'm proud. So when we're doing the haka, I wanted to learn the words pretty bad. Uh, so bad, like I just wanted to scream it out when we we're doing the haka. So you want these to, the flavour of that to drip all over the meat? As everyone prepares for the evening meal, there's a chance to relax and to learn about each other. In particular, it will help the recruits. The instructors have decided to move from Narimu to Elliot Platoon. Oh, one of the males is a Maru, so he's in two section uh, goodly. Tall as fella. It's that dude right there. He was real nervous and he like wanted to know like what everybody thought about him and all that kind of stuff. I was sort of like a clown in our platoon slash, slash section and I was distracting people and um, apparently uh, they don't need distractions. Sometimes I do it in the corridor when we're supposed to be being sensible and it uh, doesn't go well with the corporals. As evening draws in, the traditional meal, the hungi, is cooked to perfection. Both recruits and instructors work as one to enjoy the fruits of their labour. Boys, let's go, boys. It's almost like this is also my place and it's everyone's place. We no longer have to tiptoe around because you're, you're the visitor and don't really know what you're doing. It's so yum. <laughs> In the evening, the recruits gather together in the meeting house, where they have to stand up and share their personal story. There was breakfast, lunch and dinner. In six months I put on 30 kgs. I gotta love food, eh? Now I'm trying to stop is the hard part. Kia ora. Ko Sophie Early, taku ingoa. No otatahi aho. Ko Nati Tumatoinga, toku ingo. Oh, iwi ho. Ko Michael toku papa. Ko Ali toku mama. Ko Caitlin toku tuakana. No reira te koto te koto te koto katoa. Exercise just reified for me the fact that the army is about being around people and having a family. And coming to this marae, where lots of recruits before us have been here as well, the whole sense of belonging is definitely there. Yeah. Now, once the lights go off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a light, Sergeant. Oh, sorry, I took it to the ocean bar. Good night, Sergeant. <laughs> Some of us have to get up early for work in the morning. <laughs> this week 13 and the recruits will be heading out for the first time on an urban exercise. Recruit to fight has been named second in charge, also known as 2IC, of his 10-person section. 
They told us these started to learn to take control and, and they started to manage themselves a little bit, which is awesome. It's for me, I use it as a reward. I said from the start that, you know, if you get to OIC, then you've earned it. So it's sort of a goal for them. Let's go now, please. Also in Tafaiti's section is Lennox Winnie who is in charge of communications and the radio pack. But this morning, there's been some confusion about what gear needs to be taken. I'm sorry, you want to be patrolling with weaving yeah. this morning? Yeah. Body armor and D-bags on the mall. Next, it's the way that you don't want to speak. That's the way you say. I don't need. <laughs> so you're taking the radio out of the day bag. So we have to take our wet with it. So it's a big hassle, especially since I have to swap this out. And I've got to try to find ways to put a radio in a pack, along with all the other things you're already taking. Everyone's kind of just stressing out because my section's in the other room. And as a girl, like, they don't really come in too, too often. Like, they keep forgetting we're in the section. You can tell throughout the ages, like, soldiers have been carrying more and more stuff. And it just makes it, like, harder to actually fucking do whatever you're told for, like, for like a task. Because you're wearing so much stuff. <sighs> and this is the hardest part. It's getting on your pants. <sighs> there is one recruit, though, that won't be taking part today. Teo Nui Moore has decided to leave the army to look after his mother, who has been in a coma since he arrived. I didn't recognise her straight away, but as soon as I spoke, she recognised my voice and she called out to me. And as soon as she said that, I knew that it was her and I felt more comfortable. I, I looked at her and I knew that if I was in the state that she was in, she would drop everything to look after me. So I really want to show her that I care for her and I want to go look after her. And initially, I was just going to leave. So I just mentioned territorial forces and I just said, sweet, sign me up. If, I can, if there's a way I can stay in the army and look after my mother, then I'll take that option. My mother means the world to me. And yeah, a career is an important thing, but family is always first. And that's what I believe strongly in. And my mum's the closest family member I'll ever have, so she's where I need to be right now. Yeah. As a major part of the three-day exercise, the recruits have to learn how to handle threats and defend themselves in urban areas around the world. They just patrol down here. 35 meter radius around you is clear of anything. Once you're there, you're dropping me. Get the second now you're ready. Make a decision. What are we up to? I'm here now instead of just running like fucking like a fitness training PT session. I want you like this in the aim. If no one's shooting at us. I don't want us running around like this chickens yet. I want us deliberately moving. So we've just got a five minute space here at the moment. Just because we're in quite a dense place. It's just so that if someone pops out around the corner or drops a mortar or something on us, doesn't destroy the whole section, it only kills one, maybe one or two of us. The recruits are also taught to look for the enemy in house-to-house -house searches and how to find booby traps and hidden bombs. Over the last probably 20 to 30 years, the dynamics in terms of modern warfare has changed quite a lot. Back up, please. The world's becoming increasingly urbanised and things can happen very quickly in the urban environment. And that means for the recruits is that they can't be micromanaged by their section commanders. They have to really, really self-lead. And back at their base, the recruits are instructed on how to be part of a quick response team. These guys are out patrolling. If anything goes down, uh, they need assistance. We're the guys who load up, go out, help them out. The longer they take to get in their vehicle, the more time, whoever it is that's in the shit out there is, is getting shot at and potentially losing lives. So the faster we can get out there to push that, that fight our way, the better. The quick response team is on the way to help recruits who are being attacked. In charge of the section under fire is recruit Talia Duffy. Originally from Australia, Duffy agreed to join her girlfriend, who was in the New Zealand Army. 
pretty much everyone here knows, and it hasn't made an effect to being a gay female in the army, well, as a recruit, I should say. Um, I haven't felt that I've been treated any differently. <laughs> the only person that I've had issues with was my mum. So my mum took like a while to come around to it. And she was like, you know, I don't think you're that way inclined. Joining the army, also something she wasn't keen on. <laughs> but now she sends me messages like saying how proud she is of me and how she knows I'll do well just because I do everything like to the best of my abilities. So she's definitely proud, even if she wouldn't like to admit it. She's, she's come around a long way. Following back up, we're going to head back to the FOB. Shake out, five metre spacings, go. The recruits also learn how to check vehicles. Tefiti's section is tipped off about a dodgy white van, which contains some of the army's finest actors. Hey, sir. Hey, a taxi, a taxi, a taxi. taxi. I'll go through, I'll go through. Come with me, please, I need boss. to go. Come with me, please, boss. Oh, look, this is not even my car. car. It's not even my car. Claim to be a taxi and the driver's boss's car. I'm late. Oh, you there? I'm late. Oh, keep your voice down, please. Boss. You have to call my boss. He's going to be mad. Look, I'm feeling Time. quiet. I'm feeling Customer quiet. mad. Very bad, very bad. In the search, the recruits find a pistol. It's enough for the driver and passenger to be detained. Bullshit! Oh, what? Oh, I do nothing. You can't watch. It's not my vehicle. What are they doing to us? Taxi driver. But what happens when someone won't cooperate? Oh, he asked you to move over here, please. Not too cool business. You do what? You shoot me? You young boys, you can't shoot me. For Taina Kiriona, arresting civilians is a far cry from what he did before joining up. I worked as a lifeguard, pretty boring girl. You don't do much, you just stand there and try not to look forward. Why you have these guns in my face? Detain me, I don't care. Detain me, detain me. Sir, detain me, sir, I'm going. On the ground, on the ground, sir, get on the ground. I don't know how I got to the army either, right? I was just sort of scrolling through and I, for some reason I just thought, nah, I don't want to live in Auckland. I'm going to apply for the army instead. What happened now? Can I go? Uh, you can stand up and um, put your stuff back on. I initially applied for a position as an officer. They sent me down at the end of it and they're like, oh, we'll take you, but we don't want to take you as an officer. We reckon you'll be a better soldier. And I was like, you're all right, fair enough. Sir, comply. Heads your head. Get your knees. Get your knees. I was a bit gutted. I was a bit disappointed. I was a bit moody for the following week. And then after that, I just cheered up. And I was like, don't matter, sweet. I'm a soldier now. All good. You know, as to going to war, hope we don't have to do war someday. Get your hands in here, please. I don't want to kill someone, but I want to trade that trains in killing people. Um, but I know what I've like I've, I know what I've signed up for anyway. So if I have to go to war, then you have to go to war. Do a good job of it. What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? <laughs> this is democracy. Very <laughs> bad. <laughs> It's day two of the urban exercise, and to fight his section are cooped up inside while waiting for instructions. <laughs> Tiredness and fatigue are starting to affect morale. I don't care, actually, I've read something than you have. She don't care. One more night. Elsewhere, the other platoons are being sent on a mission to find the enemy and what to do if they get involved in a house to house firefight. We'll do a quick recce of the area, and then we'll deal with whatever situation arises. Using a mock village made up of containers, recruits discover the kind of urban battle conditions they'll find overseas. When the rest of the sections come through, they actually have like a live threat that they have to go through and clear. It gives them more to think about, uh, which puts a bit more pressure on them, which is what we're after, keep them under pressure. Just hard target, hard target, hard target. Watch and shoot! Watch and shoot! Watch and That I was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, I just didn't know. Kind of have to assess the situation in like a split second. Gun group, watch up. See anything? Roger. I've got one enemy. My 12 o'clock. As the recruits move through the village, 
the enemy are overcome and they gradually give up one by one. What's the big thing that came out of that one? Hectic as fuck, eh? Shit going on everywhere. Okay, that's why urban fighting is probably the most complex there is. And you've got to have your shit head on a swivel, always thinking, always talking to your mates. Don't get caught up in that excitement, yeah? Fucking let them know who's boss. It's 6 a.m. and dawn is just breaking. While the recruits are waking up at their operating base, the instructors have planned a sneaky surprise attack. Watching the battle, the officers check which recruits have been shot by the enemy. They then tell them what their injuries are or if they've been killed. from three section. A pretty sad day for us. I made them miss us. Going good? So far? I just died, so probably not good then. As the injuries and dead mount up, one of the few recruits left in the front line is 18-year-old Chrysler Goodley. Ah, uh, we're just watching our arcs because there's no contact at the moment, just waiting for someone to pop up. And if so, suppress them. We'll let everyone know, then try and take them out. So I was raised by my dad and my stepmom. Then about two years ago, they moved to Australia. And I stayed at home because I knew that I wanted to come to the army. I'm going to be a chef. Chefing's going to be my trade. I chose it because I wanted qualifications for if something happens, I've got something to fall back on when I leave. Yeah, so just being able to get out of home and start like living off my own accord, even though I'm still in barracks, like it's sort of like a step to getting my own house and family and whatnot. Are you ready, Emma? No, no bro. What are you fucking doing? Do your jaws properly, you dumb fuckers. Go! I don't really feel like a soldier yet, because the corporals and stuff, they're on another level. Like, you just see the way they work. Whoa, can I do that? And you're like, nope. They're from another world, I guess. I lost my finger. Oh. <laughs> While gaining valuable lessons from the urban exercises, the recruits have also made some embarrassing and deadly mistakes. You need to identify their vehicle before you start popping rounds into it, okay? If we shoot civilians that are part of this exercise, then you will end up in military prison. I counted six civilian casualties from when you guys arced up the LMGI van that came to come to fucking work. Don't fucking laugh. They were unarmed, they weren't even part of the fucking exercise. Oh, I had four rifles of breast pumping rounds into them. Not fucking good enough. ID your targets. Almost half the world's population now lives in some form of urban environment. So the skills that you have learned over the last few days are essential for you to be able to do your job. We've only got a few weeks left in the course before you get to graduate and march out in front of your family, friends and whanau, okay? But we need you to be operating way up here. So what I want you to now think about as you're doing that clean up is, what lesson did you personally learn that you need to improve on? It kind of just makes you think like, when you're out in an actual real situation, you don't have time to muck around, you don't have time to just stand there and go, uh, you know, like it's in, out. It happens really fast and it goes zero to 100 really quickly. Yeah, it's pretty crazy.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.